This week we are presenting the last group of avant-garde works in this series. <laughs> and this may be good news to some of you and not so good to others. It is the... <laughs> it is probably the most remarkable group of works of all uh, one might say, the most avant-garde. Uh, because on this program we are dealing with aspects of chance music, or at least with music which is partly written down and partly left to accident of various kinds. Uh, this is very serious, and this so-called aleatoric aspect of today's new music has come in for more comment, excitement, controversy, and speculation than any other aspect. And this is probably because the very nature of the aleatory art is so discussable. It ranges from the most serious possible intention and execution to the most tricky anti-musical kind of Dadaism. Now, we have tried in choosing our works for this program to choose only works that can be identified as serious in intention and genuinely adventurous in seeking new paths of music making. Now, of course, working on this kind of music all week has involved a good deal of psychological readjustment on the part of the orchestra members themselves <laughs> since, since they are artists who are trained to reproduce with exquisite exactness the notes that are set before them, whereas tonight they are confronted not only by notes, but by diagrams, charts, graphs, and sets of complex directions in prose. One thing that pleases me is that the various pieces tonight are so different in character, in sound, and in aesthetic direction, and yet they are all, in one way or another, aleatory. Now that word aleatory or aleatoric, which is being so frequently uttered these days, means, as you may know, a relating to chance or luck, and derives from the Latin word for dice, aleiae, aleiae yacta est, the die is cast. And in fact, many of the newer composers have literally used the throwing of dice to determine the materials of their compositions, and even for entire structures. But there are many other means of obtaining random selections, as we shall hear tonight. The main thing to keep in mind is the difference between music which, on the one hand, has predetermined material invented and written down by the composer and then surrendered to certain random conditions to be expanded and developed in performance, and on the other hand, music which is based to begin with on random material the expansion, development, or performance of which is controlled and determined by the composer. Let me give you an example. Here on my desk is a bit of music which was composed by a computing machine in London. Now, it is perfectly respectable looking music in a standard 12-tone technique and might have been written by almost any imitator of Schoenberg. The computer was fed a program of instructions, including a basic 12-tone roll, and from then on, it was on its own, turning out an entire piece made of arbitrary and random selections based on that predetermined material. I thought you might like to hear what uh, it sounds like. So here are 10 brief bars of it, arranged for oboe, clarinet, and bassoon. not bad. In case any of you are interested in hearing more of that music, the computer's name is Pegasus and, uh, and can be contacted through the BBC. Now, uh, that was an example of predetermined material with random development. 
Now let us hear an example of music with no predetermined material at all, and only the slightest, most spontaneous control of its evolvement. In other words, the orchestra and I will compose on the spot. Now nothing has been fixed or decided upon in advance except two or three signals for starting and stopping. But otherwise, every note you hear will have been spontaneously invented by the New York Philharmonic Orchestra with its conductor serving only as a kind of general guide or policeman. Uh, this is, of course, the other extreme of the aleatory art. Now here's the New York Philharmonic's improvisation number one, which has never before been played and will never again be played. <laughs> I thought that was very nice <laughs> and also very serious. You see, I have no way of knowing what's coming out and I'm always either pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised. Needless to say, what we have just played has no importance at all as a piece. It doesn't even exist any longer. But its true significance lies in the identification of the performers with the creative act the participation by the orchestra in the actual composing of music. And this is a phenomenon that grows in importance every day. It's one of the most exciting aspects of contemporary music. The works of Stockhausen, for example, and Lucas Foss, and so many other gifted composers, are more and more frequently involving the performer in the creative process, as will the works you are to hear now. Of course, our improvisation just now is an extreme example of the aleatory art, as I said before, because there is no composer involved at all. But the three compositions we are about to hear are by real composers, sensitive and thoughtful artists, each of whom uses different random elements in different ways. For example, Mr. Cage used chance in the very composing of his piece. For one thing, he used the changes of the famous Chinese fortune book E. King, and for another he obtained certain notes by placing transparent music paper over a map of the stars called Atlas Eclipticalis and inscribing a note wherever a star appeared. He has also obtained notes for this piece by observing imperfections in the music paper on which he was composing it. But these are all chance elements. But the piece is even more aleatory than that in the sense that every instrument of the orchestra has a contact microphone attached to it so that the notes they play 
will be further subjected to random choices of the composer and his assistant who will be seated at the electronic controls. Thus, the composer at the switchboard is ultimately responsible for what comes out over the various loudspeakers that are placed around the hall. And no member of the orchestra ever knows when he will predominate over the others, over his colleagues, or for that matter, whether he'll be heard at all. But remember, this is not only chance music. By any means, since every note the orchestra plays has been written down by the composer. Therefore, it's the very opposite of the improvisation we just made. Mr. Cage's work uh, does not need a conductor, but it does need a timing control. Therefore, this piece will be conducted by that machine, which is simply a clock-like hand, which will rotate once very slowly. When the hand reaches the 15-second mark, or the first quadrant, two minutes will have elapsed, and so on for the three remaining segments. Thus, when the hand is back in the starting position, eight minutes will have elapsed, and the piece will be over.